the petrol station, they all bring the knowledge back and join together. Leapy left because there was no work in the village. But thanks to coffee, he and others are coming home. When I stayed in the city, I was worth nothing, just a worker. But here, there is not just money. I am proud to work with my family. There is tremendous pride here, and it extends quite literally to every bean. Any that go astray are painstakingly recovered. In their new giant courtyard, the beans are spread out to dry in the high mountain air. Only the premium beans will be used by Doi Chang. The other 40 percent go to other buyers. We'll take a small percentage like this one here, which is a consistent good bean. These are beans that are non-ripened. This one's a rotten bean. This one's undersized. That's chipped. The sorting takes place here. Doing it by hand is labor-intensive, but less is missed this way. Then it's off to the roaster. Getting this 90-year-old antique roaster up the mountain eight years ago was a mammoth feat. Back then, they didn't have any roads, so they had to build one and haul it up piece by piece, all six tons of it. Since then, the ACA have earned enough money to invest in a second, newer roaster. Now they can process eight tons a month for the Asian market. That's 25 percent of the beans they harvest. As for the other 75 percent? This is our 900 square meter uh, warehouse. And uh, behind me here, we have our next two containers of green beans to go to Vancouver. This year, over 800 tons of premium green coffee beans will be shipped from the warehouse in Doi Chang to Richmond, B.C. They've come here to Canterbury Coffee Company, and at Canterbury Coffee Company, what they do is they roast the beans, they pack them, and they distribute them to grocery stores and uh, coffee shops. This recent partnership with Canterbury, the largest gourmet roasting facility in Western Canada, is just what Doi Chang Coffee needs to get a foothold in the growing gourmet coffee market. It's also exactly what Canterbury was looking for. We have a very short supply of organic fair trade coffee in the marketplace. Um, more and more coffee houses are looking for that product. Lightheart's recent visit to Doi Chang Village clinched the deal. They've taken their coffee from not even being known to being rated in the 1991 um, area, and it's just exciting to see that happening. So we feel good that we're part of that giving back to, to those people. Those are the children that will benefit a lot. With Canterbury's help, Doi Chang Coffee recently extended its market into Abu Dhabi, Trinidad, Korea, China and Japan. With every sale, life for the Aka gets a little better. I was living a comfortable life. I could have retired, but there's a much greater feeling and passion towards this project than anything else I've done before. tribe of northern Thailand, traditions like cooking over open fires in smoke-filled bamboo huts come from a time not so long ago, before electricity and running water had reached the remote mountaintop village, when all they had were the crops they grew and the silver rupees brought by opium traders. But while the coins used to adorn the Aka women's ornate headdresses remain, the opium does not. It's been replaced by a new crop. Since coffee, my life has changed in every way because there is more salary and more hope for the future. The opium was illegal and that was no good. After a while, we grew coffee together and it replaced the opium. And that makes me very happy. Pico, a well-respected elder, represents the changing face of his village. His image has become the logo for Doi Chang Coffee, which is earning them, for the first time in their lives, a decent wage. What was this village like a few years ago? Oh, it's worse. This also, you know, the road is dirt road, all the house made of bamboo, the roof with the grass and all that kind of thing, no income. 
Wecha, a hard-working humanitarian with a heart of gold, is helping the Aka to manage their newfound good fortune. This is the site of their latest and most ambitious project. This is, will be the playground for everybody. Then the school for about 300 children will be this site. The hospital, we are thinking that we are going to put that way if it should. A hospital is something the 10,000 villagers who call Doi Chang home have long needed. Four years ago, when the Thai government built this clinic, they forgot a few things. But nothing at all. It's just empty. He's That's not exaggerating. With the exception of a few beaten up beds, they really don't have anything. This is a treatment room, should be. And again, empty. all you have are sinks. Do you even have water? And you don't even have water. <laughs> they were supposed to get a dentist, one to serve the entire village. Right. Instead... So they gave you the plumbing, <laughs> and no chair and no dentist. And if you don't do it yourself, be like this another so 20 years. you pull your own tooth here. And that's what we do. <laughs> Keep in mind, Doi Chang is several hours away from the nearest hospital, a place most villagers couldn't access anyway because they don't have Thai ID a document they must have to leave the mountain. But it's nothing in here. Circumstances that make the inadequacies of the so-called delivery room particularly troubling. It's supposed to be for that, but nothing here. Yeah. So women can't even give birth here? No. At home, or if you want to go, have to go to the hospital in town. And if you have it at home and there's a problem, you're out of Die. Life. Both. That happens, people die? Uh, Lot. As for the school, for years, this is how they got there. Once they arrived, this is where they studied, in one of four drafty rooms with dirt floors. As you see, it's very hard to get Tisha to come up and stay here uh, to teach the students, you know, because you see already, the road to come up here sometimes takes something like five, six hours. A few years ago, the government built a new school, but only children with Thai ID can attend, which means hundreds go without. That's why the Aka want to build their own school. As well as a bigger, better daycare. 300 preschoolers live in Doi Chang, but there's only room for 40 here. I don't mind if the grow up children go and help their families in, in the farm, but just two, three, four years old, we should have somebody look after them while their parents go to the coffee farm. Already, money from the sale of their coffee beans has built the Akko their first library. The books to fill it will come with the next harvest. And then there's the Doi Chang Coffee Academy. Built by the farmers themselves, instructors from Thai universities come here to teach them, free of charge, about everything from finances to sustainable agriculture. Many years ago, no chance like this. Nobody come up here and teach them. Most of the people that come from big town just come to take advantage. Everybody knows about earthworm, but they didn't know how to use it. But this one uh, is a way to increase the compost for the farmer. With their newfound knowledge, these little worms will soon grow big and strong, making the soil rich and fertile, aiding in the growth and quality of the beans that are making it possible for the Aka to work their way out of poverty. We never beg. We want to work for whatever we want to see. That's how we promise to each other. The climate in the Doi Chang Valley is ideal for growing lush, fruit-laden coffee trees. Since the Aka Hill tribe switched from growing opium poppies, those who are able to leave the village to earn money in the cities are returning. When I start coffee business, all of member family come back to help because the coffee business is legal, so it makes good money and better life. With the money they're now earning, the Aka can afford to buy more land to grow more crops. 
No land is wasted. What isn't suitable for coffee is used to plant other crops like certified organic blue oolong tea. It's one of the many 